Here we go. Yay. Officially live for our next interview. And I'm excited for this one because this is one of my closer friends from E-Town. Everybody, this is Olivia Lee, and I'm excited to have her on. She graduated uh, with me, per se, from E-Town. Not in the same year, but nonetheless from E-Town. And she's great, and I'll let her take it away. Let's talk oh, about yourself. You. Introduce yeah. us to yourself and let us know who you are. Well, you said you said a lot, most of it. Um, so I'm Olivia. I went to E-Town. I majored in occupational therapy. I graduated with my bachelor's in 2019. And then I did the five-year program there for OT. So I also graduated with my master's in 2020. But of course, because of COVID, it was a little delayed. So I recently graduated just in December, actually, officially. So there's that. I, again, also went to E-Town with Jamie. We met in the Momentum program. He was a kinesis. You're a year above me, right? That is correct. Yes. I know, I know that You're... sounds weird that I forgot, but it's just everything blurs together. But um, yep. yeah, so Jamie was a kinesis when I was a freshman. And then I became a kinesis, which is basically like a mentor for like first years coming in who qualify for the program. Um, so we bonded through that. And then, yeah. Here I am now. <laughs> Seven thousand years later. Yeah, basically. That's <laughs> it feels. It feels like it. So, so I'm just curious. So we don't have to dwell into this too much. But you said that you graduated in December. Because yes. Because so is that every single OT? Was it not? No. So basically, like we do get to walk at graduation with everyone in May. Okay. Um, but then we get like our degrees, like our diploma, in August typically because of field work so we do 12 weeks of field work the summer usually um from may until um august or you know whenever whenever people are able to finish in 12 weeks um but again because of covid like things were shutting down so field work sites were canceled so um mine got canceled so then i had to find another location but with that postponed i uh was able to graduate in December instead. Okay. So some people were able to graduate in August, some in December, some unfortunately a little more further back. So we're all kind of a cohort, uh, all in different places in our lives, but getting there nonetheless. <laughs> scattered. Scattered, and, yeah, yeah. Scattered. Yeah. And uh, so I, I should know this, but I don't, because I, like oh, I, I feel like I know every OT major at E-Town. <laughs> now, in order to pass that last exam that you need to take, Mm -hmm. Did you need to have that last OT placement already done with? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So even yeah. with the extenuating circumstance of COVID, were you not able to take that exam until you finished mm -hmm. that? Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, and then you also need to have that degree um, to get your score. So I needed to finish field work. And my field work was only postponed um, a few weeks, actually. So I didn't end up finishing in September. But with the whole, like, things being printed at E-Town and different, like, regulations that they had, I technically still couldn't uh, graduate in December. So I had uh, kind of like a limbo period, but I still took that time to study. I was able to take the exam. But um, the rule is you can't get your score until you have like an official degree from the school. So I had a lot of months to study, but I took that time to kind of just take my time and try to really know the material. And then I passed, fortunately. So that's why here I am. <laughs> um, OT, OT. OT, OT. Yeah, I oh, hope that yeah. makes sense because I know it's very complicated. It, it, it's complicated for me just because yeah. when I listen, I listen but I sometimes yeah. I don't grasp concepts very easily. I, no, I just I, I, I just made myself sound so dumb. But no, not at all. I just I, hope I explained it well to you and viewers. <laughs> the whole world itself. No, but um yeah. I'm excited to have you on to talk about a few places that you've been. Yes, and I'm excited just, too. You've been specifically to Costa Rica, which is what we're gonna hit on today a little bit. Yes. But before we go to Costa Rica, I would actually like to talk about your specialty of Disney. <laughs> sure, absolutely. So Disney. You know. So whether we're talking whether we're talking about Disney Plus, whether right. we're talking about <laughs> Disney in general, Disney World, to be yeah. more specific, Disney World for today. Okay. So when we were talking beforehand, I said that when I think of certain places, I think of certain people. Mm -hmm. So when I think of Spain per se, I'll think of like Melissa. Yes. Because that's where she's at now and that's Another where she's shout lives. out to her. 
No shout to her. We're giving we're giving everybody the love today. Yes. When I think of New York, I think of who our next guest will be. I'll keep mm-hmm. that private for a sec because <laughs> what I build up the build up the suspense. Suspense. And when I think of Disney, I think of you because Disney. It's yes. Olivia. You actually I'm honored. You actually a part partner sponsorship for them, and I, oh. we just don't we just don't know it. <laughs> so let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, where did that um, love? Where does that love from Disney come? And what gives you those Disney vibes specifically? Those Disney vibes. Um, I guess the cliche answer, but it's true, is that just oh, I've always loved Disney. Um, first time I went with my family, I was five. Um, so honestly, I don't remember too too much of it. Um, that was a surprise for us. So. I remember the excitement and everything, just obviously not the details, but um, just Disney movies, Disney characters, just everything Disney, honestly, Marvel, princesses, um, Disney Channel, I guess, <laughs> even, um, which I actually didn't have Disney Channel growing up. So it really is just like the classic kind of like Walt Disney um, movies and such. But I don't know, it's just like the as cliche as it sounds, just the happiness that it makes me feel. I know that sounds like really childish, but it's just like, I think anyone and everyone can enjoy Disney. Mm-hmm. Um, just like the animation. I just watched Soul recently, the one of the newer Pixar movies. I haven't seen Raya yet, but I mean, just like the music and Soul and the animation and just watching it grow. Again, just everything, basically. Everything in general. Yeah, I know that's so, like, very broad. So like your love for Disney when it comes to like shows is like my love for Disney when it comes to like video games. So yeah. like my favorite video game of all time, it's a game it's a game called Kingdom Hearts. Yes, so, I was actually like thinking about that um recently. Which is like I, I mean I've never played it, but it's just like okay. I'm, I'm curious as to like what it is. It's it's so complex and so amazing and so beautiful. It's all Disney themed. It's all Disney yeah. themed. So it's about this this character named Sora who has like these special powers and he has to visit all these Disney worlds. And in each Disney world, there's a problem in the world and only he can solve it. So for example, if he's going to the world of Aladdin, Jasmine is being abducted. So he needs to help, he needs to help the poor prince save (laughs) Jasmine. Or if he's going to Hercules, the world of Hercules, he needs to help Hercules defeat Hades. Yeah. Or if he's going to like Pirates of the Caribbean, he needs to help Jack Sparrow defeat the ugly octopus guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I forget I forget his name. That that was rude. But um, no, you're right. it, for example, so it's just a, it's it's just it's amazing. It's just a fun, like beautiful and that's actually where I fell in love with Disney. Because I didn't watch Disney at all until I played that video game and I was like, Oh, oh okay. Look at all these cool like movies and shows yeah. so no that's cool absolutely what platforms is that game on uh ps the playstation playstation okay the playstation i yeah. really gotta look into that now like now i'm yeah. excited like i knew i kind of like knew what it was ish yeah but not really so i think like that sounds cool so definitely gotta look you, that. you would actually love it so I've whether really- you whether you play video games or not if you never have touched a controller, this is the only game you need to play because you will you will actually understand it because yeah. every Disney so it's like a hundred Disney worlds for each game. So you would go to you go to a bunch of different places. Every every place I just mentioned, and on top of that, you'll go to Hollow. What, what was the Halloween movie? I'm trying to think of the Halloween. Halloween Town. Halloween Town. Okay. You'll go. You'll go to Halloween Town. Oh you'll wow! Go, Even those like classics. The classics. Wow. You'll go to Frozen. You'll go to Beauty and the Beast. Oh, you'll my go. Two you'll go to Toy Story, which is, and then it also educates you in the sense of like I didn't even know that these were Disney related. Mm-hmm. Like I had no idea that oh, Toy really? Story. Would, like I should have known that, but didn't no, know that was didn't Disney related. Yeah. Monsters Incorporated. I didn't know that was Disney related. Oh. Like all these <laughs> these Disney stuff, and then which one is Maleficent from? Which which uh, movie? Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. Okay. Yeah. So from there so yeah just educates you on just everything disney you would love it yes no i'm i'm getting so excited do they have like marvel too yes there are uh, no not so not marvel and kingdom hearts so that's a whole different one i think but that would be an amazing idea to pitch to the writers to pitch them yeah i wonder i wonder if they can i don't really know like the rights to that or anything um i do have the switch light so i do have a marvel game on there Good. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so I do have some games, but I don't have a PlayStation. Spencer does. So 
Cool. Maybe I'll and just adopt it. Yeah. yeah. Just take his PlayStation, maybe. <laughs> well, as his girlfriend, I think you have those rights. Yes. So. Yeah. <laughs> we have been talking about like possibly getting um me a PlayStation 4. Because I know they came out with the five. Yes. So um hopefully the four will be in less demand and then maybe I can like snatch one. <laughs> for just fifty dollars hopefully that would that would be a dream i don't think that cheap but still just got you just got to check out the black market or like world market for like, yeah. <laughs> knowing me i'd buy like something completely wrong so <laughs> 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 sticking to the sticking to the disney theme so you've been yes. to disney world a bunch of times of course. yes now i have not been to either the world or the land of disney yet which mm -hmm. i but i really want to it's like bucket list for like places in the states now, if you can, can you said the first time you went was five, correct? Yes. When was the most recent time that you went? That's actually funny you bring it up because I was going to say it was the week before everything shut down. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, I spent only a day there because the purpose of the trip was actually to volunteer at Give Kids the World with um, a group from E-Town. But um, I'll, I'll still count it. So that's the last time mm -hmm. I was in Disney World because... That was our last day um, of the trip. And I remembered the day we left for Florida for our volunteer service trip. Um, I remember watching TV and then I went to like a, like a press conference and it was saying either like the first death or the first case or something like that mm -hmm. in the US. And I just remember thinking like, oh crap, kind of. Um, and then, you know, as we're in Florida, the only cases were in Washington. Mm -hmm. I believe. And then halfway through the trip, um, it got to Florida. So I remember we were all kind of like checking our phones and everything. So then throughout the trip, I was like, should I cancel my Disney like plans um, on our last day? Because it was kind of like an independent thing. Like we could all um, plan our own if we wanted to go to Disney, or if we wanted to go to Universal or whatever. Um, but I, I didn't. So I remembered like having so much hand sanitizer. I remember it was still obviously just as crowded, but um there was kind of like that feel where there was like hand sanitizer outside yep. of like the different parks, the different rides and everything. Um, and then I just remembered like trying to like wipe seats, like at the restaurants and everything. Yep. But um, yeah, so that was the last time I went to Disney, luckily. Okay. So like, the, like right before everything like hit. Right before everything. Cause yeah. Cause then when I got back to school, I was in class for a few more days and then everything shut down. Okay. So it was crazy to think like, oh, I was just in Florida. I was just in Disney. Just there. You, you had to get one more Disney trip in before the whole world. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. I think that's the most Olivia thing you could do. Yeah, no, <laughs> you gotta, exactly. you gotta, and I you went gotta. alone. So it was just me. It was a solo trip to Disney and it was great. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you go to Disney, do you drive or do you fly? Fly. You fly. Actually, yeah. So how was that flight back? Was it like, Panic. Um, <laughs> I mean, was it what? I'm sorry. Was it, was it like panic per se? Was like, uh, kind like, of like, again, it was just all like, I don't want to overreact kind of type thing. So I, I just made sure I wiped every, like the seat down before I sat on the plane. And then as soon as we got back, it felt normal, but like, you know, like TVs are everywhere in the airport and it's just all news and like New York had shut down, I believe. Okay. I think New York was the first of all of us to shut down maybe and i just know like a lot of my family is in new york so i was just kind of like what am i coming back to it's not like i left the country so it was kind of weird that i was like in my own little bubble though still gotcha yeah cool <laughs> even, even though it's been a year i still feel like it was just yesterday right absolutely it was, it's crazy to think um that's all it's that's all i can say really just absolutely crazy and then actually um the last like full trip to disney i went was with spencer and that was in january so it was mm -hmm. actually like a few months apart when i was in disney okay. um so that also still in itself was crazy because COVID technically was kind of around that time and especially disney it's like everyone from all over the world is coming so that was also surreal to think about <laughs> it could have just, just been a melting pot of just... exactly that's what i'm thinking it's like yeah, traveling, that's pretty bad. But I mean, Disney, everyone around the world's coming. <laughs> so. Well, have you been to um, 
this is aside from Disney. Have you been to like the Fire and Ice Festival in Lidditz, PA, by chance? I have not. Okay. <laughs> Recommend you take Spencer there next I'd year. Love to, yeah. Um, once this is all calmed down, they did it this year, but I didn't go just because. So oh, okay. it, it's a very popular festival. So it's mainly like on the main streets of Lidditz. It's just like this huge like. How do I put it? So it's like so it's when they make like ice mad big magic like beautiful ice sculptures. Oh, that's cool. Like really, really cool, beautiful ice sculptures. I think it's a thing in Harrisburg too, but like the one in Lidditz is really, really nice. Oh, yeah. And it's on the main about, yeah. it's on the main street of Lidditz, so a bunch of like vendors come out, a bunch of like food trucks come out, a bunch of like artisan shops like open up their shops mm -hmm. and do like these really nice deals. You also get like these really cool sweets. Um, there was actually a Peruvian truck which made my heart really happy oh, <laughs> because this was like right after I came back from Peru. Oh. I took out I took Alpha there and we went with my sister and my brother-in-law at the time. It was so cool, but this was like a month before everything shut down. It was in like mid February, mm -hmm. and I remember at the time like everything was so normal. Everything was like yeah. it ha it happened so quickly within those three weeks, yeah. and then I remember Alpha texted me and was like. We were just in Lidditz. Like, is there anything we should be concerned about? I was right, like, yeah, you have to think about that. I was like, I'm not. I eat Peruvian food. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, like I'm, it was as worth it. <laughs> I'm as happy as I can be. But yeah. then the month later, I texted him back a month later and I was like, actually. <laughs> i don't know but um but it, yeah i remember that was my like thing of like every and like this is like not like a tiny festival that people just from lancaster come to like all people all yeah. over the state go to this thing like, this is like yeah. a big thing so i recommend you take spencer there you like it. i would love to no that sounds like right up our alley we love looking at like festivals and stuff like that it's neat and it's cold <laughs> Which makes it even more fun. And because, it's cold. Yeah. So like, I feel like ice, some, yeah. I feel like sometimes that makes it even colder. That makes it even better cool. because like because <laughs> like you're freezing and you see all of these like crazy east like east coasters like yes. walking around in their scarves and their jackets yeah. and you are you are as well and like you're all suffering together, which is the most. Oh, God. And I'm not so. much of a cold person, but I'll make sure to <laughs> bundle up then. I'll yeah. definitely look into that. Yeah. Yeah, you'd like it. We I'll love, send you. We the, love our adventures. Yeah, you like that. Yeah. So, st yep. And with Disney specifically, so are there any like when you go to Disney World in Orlando because you've been there a few times? Mm -hmm. wh what excites you the most about going there, and what do you look forward to the most every time you get to go? Ooh. I guess like whatever's new, whatever has been updated. Because I don't go too too often. Like I know there are people who go there like twice a year or something like that. But um, there have definitely been, like, years in between of when I go. So this most recent one, or one of the more recent ones in, back in January, uh, I hadn't been to the Star Wars. Um, they had just opened up Batu. I feel like that's called. I mean, I know I'm a huge Disney fan, but Star Wars mm -hmm. isn't. Um, my I'm not most knowledgeable in Star Wars. Um, I have seen them all, but anyway, I digress. But um, so that was really cool because <laughs> it was just so immersive. Like it's just absolutely amazing. Like um, you just feel like you're on set, you're in the movie, um, and then it's just all these like stormtroopers walking around. And the two new rides, one is Rise of the Resistance, and it was so popular that it was um, that you need the like boarding passes for. So the way that worked was um, we went at 7 a.m. And as soon as we enter the park, I think like 7 a.m. on the dot, like on the Disney app, um, you like you just hit like um, like apply or something, you know, just to get like a boarding pass. And then mm -hmm. so Spencer and I both had our phones out and we're both trying to like try to get like a time that we can go on because, again, it's so popular, like the line would just be like absolutely insane so they had to give us boarding passes certain times for us to go on um and everyone's literally on their phones at 7 a.m it was it was so crowded it was crazy um but moral of the story is like i think just like the new things that we can go see each time because disney is always like creating and making new things and i think the coolest part about um rise of the resistance besides it being so realistic like you felt like you were in the movie like everything is like stories high um and you just feel so tiny but it's um trackless or something like that so i'm not the engineer i'm not really great at explaining it mm -hmm. but there's no track like i don't know if it's like 
magnetic or what, but like you're really just kind of going all over the floor, like the um, car you're in basically. So that was new and that's something I've never seen before with Disney. Um, so then next time I'm looking forward to seeing like, I know they're building like um, the Guardians of the Galaxy, like a little oh, yeah. place okay. for that in um, in Epcot. So like, you know, just like those little things that were not really little, those huge things that they update. Okay. Yeah. That would be that would be amazing. I I man, I've always really wanted to go just because everyone that's been there has told me like when you go to Disney World or Disneyland, it's like you're literally transported to a different world. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Um and there are different parks. So again, I'm not really sure like how much you know about Disney. I know you've never been, but mm -hmm. um just like from what people have told you or what you've seen maybe online. But there are, you know, there's Hollywood Studios, there's Animal Kingdom, there's Epcot. So you would absolutely love Epcot because it's all the different countries. Um, again, not sure how much you know about Epcot. I don't want to mm. spit too much at you that you already know, maybe. But yeah. um, it's, it's really cool because um, just even the people, even the workers are all from all over the world. They have like their name tags that um, mm -hmm. have like where they're from, where they grew up and everything. And then all like the food is as, you know, um, it matches like the culture as much as they can, I believe. Um, the music, it's just like, it's so cool because it is part of just one park, Epcot. And it's just kind of like a little, just imagine like a little town basically. So like you, you walk and then it's like suddenly you're in China and then suddenly you're in Mexico, but um, they're literally like right next to each other too. So you kind of like don't realize it's kind of like all blending in, but it's, it's so cool in that sense. And so immersive. I need to go. Yeah, you really do. Real, I, I highly recommend um, and then Animal Kingdom was Spencer's favorite and one of mine too, because just all the animal like you didn't feel like you were in, um, like a Disney park, I guess per se. Because like when you think of Disney, obviously you think of Magic Kingdom where the huge Cinderella um, castle is, yeah. but Animal Kingdom is just like you're in like the rainforest or like the Sahara Desert and just all these really really cool places. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the good thing about like um like like Disney World or Disneyland or stuff like that is mm -hmm. that sometimes people who aren't us like people who are outside of the United States like other foreigners yeah. when they think of the U.S. they think of most of the time New York yes they think of Los Angeles they think of how like Texas takes up like seventy percent of our population <laughs> which, which which it kind of does but it doesn't at the same time <laughs> and then on the top they think of like like where North Dakota and South Dakota at they think there's like nothing there. Like, yeah. like, like that's the typical like what possible foreigner idea of yeah. the state. Whereas there are certain things that we do have that are like hidden gems within the country. And I feel like even though I haven't been there yet, that every time somebody describes Disney World or Disneyland to me, that that's what that is. Like yeah. one of the hidden gems. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's it's amazing. <laughs> I remember what else at E Town. People would tell me like I think there was one person I know that did it. One of Nick's friends, she did like a Disney internship. Oh, okay. Like um, probably the Disney college program. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I wish I knew you... more because I, I definitely wanted to do it. I remember in high school, I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. But I don't think it, I think it has to like kind of fit with your pro, like the program you're in. So I want to say it's similar to study abroad. Like you go for like a semester and from what I've looked up, again, it, this was like five years ago when I looked into the program. Um, I think like the different things you can get into are like, I guess, like customer service. So like different things that um, you can do, I guess, like room service. If you're into like culinary school, you can like, I guess, be a chef there. Or um, if you're a photographer, you can like take the pictures. You can be a ride attendant um it's so cool to me that's why i remember when people post these things um, but yeah so I've, I've seen a lot of people do that and it, it looks like a lot of fun it looks like a time of i don't know anything about like classes <laughs> like where the education aspect comes in that sense but um i feel like a lot of people who do um dcp the college program i feel like they segue into even working there mm -hmm. um, which is really cool so yeah Awesome. that's my knowledge on it <laughs> that's amazing would you ever like so you've been there a few times would that be like a dream per se to do like some kind of ot work like near 
Disney. Yes, absolutely. So my other favorite place in the world is Give Kids the World, which is mm-hmm. a nonprofit. Um, it's like a little village um, for those for children with life threatening illnesses. So say a child has a make a wish or any other wish granting organization and their wish is to go to Disney as like mm-hmm. it's really common or any like anything down there in Florida, like Universal or um, SeaWorld or anything. Um, they can actually stay there like for free and like um, they provide meals even like ice cream for breakfast they have wheelchair accessible rides um, little water parks everything's wheelchair accessible um, they even have their own little castle where they can make a wish um, write their name on so it's it's absolutely amazing that's so cute um, yeah so that's um when i go down there a lot of the time sometimes i'll spend like a day in disney or even like an afternoon and then i'll do the morning or evening shift in, at give kids the world um so yeah again going back to your question i would love to do like ot stuff there um again like give kids the world that's like a vacation for them so they wouldn't necessarily do ot but just ideal would love to go there somehow make it work more somehow. more often yeah i don't know about live there because i do like the excitement of going there um, and I don't want to ever lose that excitement. So if I did live there, I feel like that would become routine, if that makes yeah. sense. But, yeah. you know, one day, I know a lot of the volunteers there, um, some of them are like older, some of them come from school, but those who are older and either are working or retired, they have the funds to be able to go like once or twice a year with their families. So that would be like a future goal, maybe to just go somewhat occasionally or often. <laughs> You know what we can do? We can send this video to the people that work in Walt Disney. And then <laughs> since then, since they're so big on creative stuff, since they're always creating, we could say like, hey, you should create something with OT within Disneyland yes, itself. Yes, more wheelchair accessible things. Or... You hire Olivia Lee and then you hire her boyfriend who is engineer. So boom, you have everything boom. you need. <laughs> exactly. You have everything you need with an engineer to help you make your creative stuff. And then you have the actual T to do. Yes, the right. yeah, so. There you go. Exactly. We send this to Walt Disney's <laughs> children and, and we'll make it work. So <laughs> Amazing. I love so. that. <laughs> Maybe I will do that. Maybe I won't. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, keep me updated. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll send this video to them and then we probably will never hear back. It's fine. I feel like we'll I feel like we'll have a better chance of we'll writing. Get like a letter from Mickey Mouse himself. Or something. Oh, that'd be great. Because they do do that too. That's just funny. And like mascot boys, I also think of like the mascots all the time. So like, <laughs> do they just randomly walk around the park? Like, like yeah, like, sometimes they do. Like in their um, costume and whatnot. Just just like 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 are they near certain rides or is it just random like sometimes Mickey Mouse from there? Yeah. So, um, so, I mean, usually they have like signs or something. I'm not like huge signs or whatever. Like, you'll have to really look out for them. Sometimes we'll be walking, and then one time in Epcot, I was like, oh my gosh, there's Minnie Mouse or something, or oh my gosh, there's Goofy just, you know, casually over there. But you can kind of tell where they are because there are lines. Usually, of people like wanting to um, take pictures with them or get their autograph or something. Other times, they are in buildings too, and there are like kind of signs, like, say, like, Meet Stitch in here, meet Stitch inside, or meet <laughs> Sully from Monsters Inc. <laughs> so I, I do like to do that. And then again, there is a Disney app, so you can find where the characters are <laughs> and then see like what times they're at. Um, yeah. In Epcot, they, they like are around their associated country. So okay. um, Winnie the Pooh, Mary Poppins, they're in England. Um, and then. Let's see, Mulan is in China. Yeah, and just like, again, they're just all around. Belle, Belle would be in France. Elsa and Anna in Norway, yeah. I can just keep awesome. it, but yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. This reminds me of like, um, have you been to, did you ever get to go to the Renaissance Fair? In the area. No, I didn't. Like, I know exactly what you you're need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to do that. So Everyone's like, dressing up. You need to do like the outrageous dresses and like <laughs> the spot on acting. Because when because when I think of Disney, I think of like these amazing voice actors or these amazing like mm-hmm. people who become these characters on screen. And I'm hoping that if when I ever I go whenever I go to Disneyland, it'll be like that for me, like with their costumes. <laughs> yeah, like, no, like, that, yeah, like it's the, the, the acting is again it's spot on and like i love 
meeting them honestly i think it's like fun i know again like i know there are people in there or whatever even like the um actors who are playing like the princesses and the princes like they are people so it's like you see them it's not like they're in anything um it is like odd but like if they're just acting is so good that it's just so much fun to like talk to them um have you seen princess and the frog of course okay um so i loved meeting them the one time because there's no one in line behind us so we this was my high school senior trip so my friends and i took our sweet time just talking to them i asked like prince naveen how the mincing was going <laughs> the restaurant and everything again it's not it sounds crazy but it was just it was so fun it's so cool to see like they just don't break character it's great. They're, they're very consistent they are they're very consistent yeah and, and that's that's why i go to the renaissance fair per se because like that, I, that just came to my mind because at the renaissance fair they're so consistent yeah like like nothing can break them like yeah, even, really even, <laughs> even the people who like they know like i think like there was this one character his his like brother came and was like, hey, acknowledge me, I'm your brother. He was yelling at him in the in public in front of everybody in the park. And like the guy was just like playing out his character, voice yeah. acting and everything. He's like, I have no brother. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that is really cool. Like that's, that's what cool. I want when I went to Disney. Like if I go to Frozen World, I wanna like talk to Olaf and have him talk to me like he talked to Elsa and everybody. That would be funny. I've never met Olaf, but right. those in costume, they don't talk. Oh. yeah i'm sorry to um upset you with that but it's still it's still fun disney needs to get on top of that <laughs> i think mickey actually can talk i think they gave him like a voice box so like the person inside can talk as mickey which actually i wouldn't prefer i kind of like like how they're silent <laughs> it's more fun that way because it's just like this huge thing just kind of waving his arms <laughs> <laughs> but hmm. um but like they have character attendance, which I think is a good idea. So there's a person taking the photo for you, but then like a character attendant who kind of will, I'm trying to think of an example. They'll kind of like talk with you. So as you're saying, so when Spencer and I met Timon and Rafiki once from, <laughs> <laughs> this all sounds crazy. Uh, from, uh, from Lion King, we met them in Animal Kingdom. I had a fanny pack actually. That was Lion King, because Lion King's one of my favorite, favorite Disney movies. Um, so Timon was like interacting with me and he kept pointing at like my fanny pack. So like a character attendant will kind of be like, oh, Timon likes it. And we'll kind of like talk for him. But I don't know, it just, it makes, it's so fun. That's all I can say. It's just a blast. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Are okay. you a Star Wars fan? Actually? I'm not, I should be more of a Star Wars fan. Mm -hmm. I've seen a few, I've seen like three of the movies and like okay. each time I go, like I get like the gist. I get yeah, the gist. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm, yeah. But I'm not like super engraved in like the Star Wars saga and stuff okay. like that. No, that's fine. Um, that's, that's one that I've been like slowly getting into too because there's so much Disney. Like I just finished like Marvel basically. So Star mm -hmm. Wars, I'm still, still getting used to. Um, I have seen all the movies except the prequels. But anyway, so the one ride, Rise of the Resistance, because Disney lines or Disney rides have such long lines. Um, it's really cool because they try to make lines as immersive as possible, whether it's like animatronics while you're in line or different things that you can look at. Um, so Rise of the Resistance had like different Star Wars things that you could look at, like um, different costumes and whatnot. And then as you get closer to the ride itself, um, there are people acting as um, people again i'm sorry i'm so sorry disney fans but i'm a little oh. phony here but um i don't know the exact term but like people basically who work for darth vader like the bad people like kylo ren and stuff um <laughs> so those people who like kind of tell you where to step in line but they're also like in character so the one guy came up to me and i forget exactly what he asked i think he said something like um where are you from or something but because we like the riders the guests of disney in line were supposed to be the prisoners in like for the ride um i wasn't supposed to say anything i was supposed to keep my mouth shut i remember and i just remembered going um and i looked up at spencer i was like am i supposed to say something am i supposed to tell them because he was like acting he was trying to get information from me like who sent you and everything and i just remember everyone else in line is like staring forward and like um all the guests were like 
into it too so they were like oh I'm not telling you but you know little me I'm just like oh my gosh <laughs> like I'm being interrogated kind of type thing which is really cool because then you don't realize you're waiting in line because they make it as immersive as possible stone cold face stone cold face. <laughs> just, just, you know me I'm just like just, cracking up just kidding <laughs> so, cool because the guy wasn't laughing he was is so in character I, I felt like I was in trouble <laughs> But in, in his costume, he's he's like trying not to crack up because exactly, he's like, oh, yeah. she doesn't she doesn't get it. Yeah, she doesn't get it. She's, <laughs> she doesn't, she's uncultured swine. <laughs> uncultured exactly, swine. Uncultured swine. <laughs> exactly. Whatever. See, this is why this is why we booked you <laughs> because <laughs> we, this is the knowledge that I know nothing about that the uh, world should. Yeah. Know. yeah that the world yeah. should. This is phenomenal. So my last Disney question. My last okay, Disney yeah. question. And then we'll we'll talk about Costa Rica a little bit. Okay. So, what has been your favorite experience at Disneyland or Disney World? Um, Disney World, your Disney favorite? World. No, you're good. Yeah. Oh gosh, favorite. Oh, I should have thought of this before. I should have known you would have asked me about this because it's so it's that's so hard to answer. Mm -hmm. um, is there one that comes out to you? It doesn't have to be the exact favorite, but when I ask you, was there one that you thought of right away? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Precisely. Um. Gosh, I feel like I have several, so that's why I'm trying to think of one that's like most meaningful. Um, so one, I guess I would say is like the fireworks show um, okay. at Magic Kingdom. It's just so, again, I'm not like into engineering, so I don't really know like what the most um, recent technology is, but like Disney World genuinely is magical to me. It's like, how do they do that? So the fireworks show that they have there, I believe is called Happily Ever After. And it's like at like say 8 p.m. or something like each night, um, everyone in Magic Kingdom just gathers around the castle and they watch it. And it's a huge fireworks show, but also it's like they project things on the castle. So it's like the entire castle. You'll have to, you'll have to YouTube it actually. There are so many um, different videos that people just post on there. Um, and they play like music on the loudspeaker and the projections they go through all like the different like Disney Pixar movies the princesses everything that you can think of and it's just like a whole show and then the fireworks just go along with the music and it's that's all I can say it's just really magical I'm, I'm not the best at explaining it I guess but you really would have to um look at it um in the projection so an example I guess like Mulan you know the movie hopefully you know Mulan because that's a classic yeah. um yeah. when they're fighting um Mulan takes like the firecracker in the snow you know when they're like in the mountains and everything she kind of takes like a firecracker and she like puts it down in the in the ground and then she um shoots it into the mountaintop to cause the avalanche so in the projection in the show she does that and then again on the projection you see like the firecracker go as it is in the movie but at the exact part where like the castle ends a firework like a real one shoots out yeah. so it's just like the timing is so incredible and like the exact placement of where the real firework is going to shoot out of the castle is just amazing <laughs> i'm getting passionate <laughs> as you should as you should and, and i'm in, and I, I feel like i'm there which when i'm not of course but um my favorite part one of i always say my favorite part about this podcast is like the knowledge that you gain yes. per se yeah. so it's like my bucket list is just continuing to grow yeah <laughs> no like, absolutely uh, and i liked listening to it too i was um listening to shannon and nicks and hearing about hawaii i want to go to hawaii now <laughs> it's like who it's like after i hear that it's like now i now i need to go to hawaii yeah exactly and it's after i hear this it's like now i need to go to disney world oh, and, I, and yes. I need to experience the fire show but it's like that with every episode it's like somebody came on about croatia and i was like now i need to go to croatia yeah oh, now I, need I would to. love to travel i think this pandemic has made me absolutely realize like just take advantage of it i mean of course i need money but <laughs> money and time but i mean when that is allowed like oh my gosh take advantage of traveling for sure we'll get back there we'll get back there for sure oh actually but, i hope so <laughs> but awesome you're the disney expert so i was happy yes. to bring you on to talk about that yes, now you've also been out listening. you've all you've been not only within disney but also you got to cross the border a little bit and go to costa rica yes so that was awesome mm -hmm. um i remember those those stories on instagram and also those oh, photos gosh. the time yes. you were there it looked really cool yeah so tell us why you went there 
and yeah. what you remember specifically from your first few days when you were there. Okay. So let's see. From the very beginning, I qualified for um, the National Society of Leadership and Success through, um, like at E-Town's chapter. So um, you just need certain requirements. You need to meet certain hours. Um, so when I did that, then like, you know, they email you about like service trip options. So there was, I, I believe there's obviously Costa Rica. There's one in Italy and I believe there's one in Greece. And I remember like looking through them thinking like, this is great because I never studied abroad and I've never really traveled too much. So I've always been like afraid if I did study abroad, like what I like going for that long of a period of time because I've no never done anything like that before. So I thought this would be like a perfect um, start to my travel, my own travel series. Um, so we went for a week and I chose Costa Rica because I liked the service options the best there. Again, like all the trips sound really cool. But um, just like the interaction with nature going there just really like um, got to me. So I chose that and then um, I was able to go. This was in June 2018. Uh, yes, 2018. <laughs> and um, again, it was just like my first time really traveling that far. And I don't speak Spanish. So it was a little um, nerve wracking in that sense. But like I, I knew um, the people I was going with also like obviously they would speak English, the tour guide would. And I, I know people in Costa Rica, they do speak English as well. Mm. Um, but I still brought my Spanish dictionary because I did want to like, I try the best of my ability. Um, so we, I landed in San Jose and then um, spent the night there. And then the next morning, so we all flew like from across the, like around the country, we all flew into Costa Rica at like different times um, of the day. So then I met everyone the next morning um, then we drove to Manuel Antonio, which is in Cuepos. Um, again, I apologize if I mispronounce anything. I will do my best. But um, so we spent a few days, I, I want to say two days. Again, it's a, this was a little bit ago, so I'm not, um, I don't remember the exact details, but I believe like two um, days. And we did some service um, options in, let's see, we did... Kids Saving the Rainforest. Um, that's a nonprofit organization. It's a wildlife refuge. So um, we got to tour the facility. They showed us all like, the different animals they had. Um, and then the different service um, projects that we did, like um, make a new path for them, like kind of shovel gravel, make food for the animals. And then um, we were lucky enough to be able to feed the animals too. So I was able to feed the monkeys. Um, and what's actually interesting is that they, you know, taught us that these, they are wild animals and the main purpose for them was to, um, rehabilitate them essentially. So to not actually, you can't like cuddle with them or anything. You can't take pictures with them holding them, which, um, I know is like a big vacation thing, but it's just really, it was really cool to see them talk about the animals and how into nature they are there in Costa Rica in general, like not even just in Cuepo, just like everywhere in Costa Rica, um, which I, I absolutely, absolutely love. They're so passionate about the animals, nature, everything, um, their food even. So, um, yeah, I mean, I could go on. I don't know if you have any other questions or if I should continue. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just living vicariously through you. Oh, no. Oh, I, I <laughs> Did you get to try it? Like, so one thing I know Costa Rica loves is their coffee. Oh, yes. Um, no, I didn't try any coffee, okay. Um, okay. unfortunately. But they did have, if we want to talk about, like, food and, like, drinks, um, they did make oh, a yes. lot of fruit smoothies. Oh, yes. So, um, yeah. So different areas that I went to. Um, uh, Finca Luna Nueva Lodge was one... I don't want to say my favorite because I really loved it all. So I can, yeah, I can't mm -hmm. say my favorite, but <laughs> there, that's um, a lodge where they um, are like biodiverse. Like they, it's like a farm, like they have a farm tour and everything. So they can show you like really how they grow everything. Everything is organic, um, how they grow everything, produce everything, um, the animals that are there too um, for milk and other items um how they make it and then which is really cool is that they give it to you for breakfast lunch dinner i think so it's everything's so fresh and like the smoothies like it's just so good it's just it, nothing compares i feel like awesome yeah. so 
now I need to go to Costa Rica and get a yes. smoothie. Oh, <laughs> it's like all these was, little things. Yeah, when I was going through everything just to kind of refresh my memory for this um, podcast, I was like, oh my God, I need to go back. Absolutely. So let me let me pick your brain a little bit and ask yeah. you about a, a cultural thing that you, you might remember okay. while you were there. Um, I that. Yeah, so I mean, I guess it's a strain from like touching, I guess necessarily, but more so yeah. um, with nature, if you don't mind me going back to the whole nature yes. thing. Yes, yes. Um, they're uh, again like I just they're so passionate they're so um don't like I don't know not like not like we here mishandle animals or anything I mean you know maybe some people do obviously like I can't speak for like the whole um entirety the whole population but I don't know um, but I mean like when you when you go um on vacations I'm not trying to insult anyone or downplay anything but like you know people like to go hold animals or like ride elephants or like hold a koala kind of type thing but um in costa rica they were very like no like absolutely not like you cannot like if we um what all like the different like wildlife centers that we went to they're like at, like do not like obviously touch them i mean you wouldn't at a zoo but again like they're just even the wild animals they say like don't feed them or anything but unfortunately i did see a lot of tourists feeding them interacting with them um, I mean, you can stop take pictures, obviously, but it's just kind of like, you know, don't try to have them like rely on you for food or anything type thing. Yeah. Um, but again, just like other things too that they're so um, like health wise to like food, they grow um, a lot of their food. Um, and yeah, no, it's just awesome how into that they are. If that answers your question a little bit. It does. So yeah. ecosystem is something that they really, really care about. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Something they really, so really care about. Yeah. That's something you, that's something like, that's the first thing that came to your mind. Yeah. Yes. Always. Yeah. When I think of that trip, like that's the first thing I told people, like when I came back to, which is like my favorite aspect of it was just how passionate they were about it and everything and knowledgeable too, even um, just of like nature and wildlife. Mm -hmm. yeah. Central America is so intriguing in the sense of like, they're like in the middle of the continents. Like you have North America, you have South America, and then you have like Central America, where you have like Honduras and Guatemala and El Salvador and Costa Rica. Like they're in that little like Panama, like weird shape right there. Yeah. But they're so unique and so different from other Spanish cultures because they're yeah. in the cent they're centralized. So, yeah. but Costa Rica is literally in the middle of all of those. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, even though I haven't been to Central America yet, they're the most unique because Costa Rica, Costa Rica really goes out of its way to be different when it comes yes. to solar energy, yes. when it comes to how they take care of their ecosystem, yeah. when it comes to their culture and like how they treat people. And like, I remember who was it? Liz went there, I think. Oh, and okay. she told me a little bit of like how it was. And then Jamie Lee has also got to go there. And yes. for them, it was just this whole experience of like kind people and they really try to help you. and. I just know word based per se. I don't know if any of this rings a bell, but it was very much like this beautiful culture of like people yes. trying to do their best yeah. with what they have. They so. always, yes, absolutely, with the whole like do best with what they have. Like, I've never, again, I only went for a week, but just like even just never saw any complaints. Like, we went to volunteer at a school and they were all so grateful, so happy, so excited um, with everything they have. And again, it's very different from the US, like just different things that we have. So it's just really cool to see um, what like people are grateful for in that sense um oh there was another point i was going to make but I forgot. oh even just like a small thing just like just they just want to preserve the world basically like yeah. and um you know obviously that's what this world needs to thrive on like take care of the earth even the smallest thing as like you don't flush toilet paper sometimes in some places that you go to i, I don't think it's everywhere but um yep. some place that we went to we were just told not to just out of you know respect you don't want to like clog the toilets or anything but just even like just eco-friendly in general stuff like that the little yeah, things even like the little the little things yeah exactly i know the little things. Maybe talking about toilets this isn't the best thing but still but i get it yeah i get it um adventure-esque wise did you get to do anything like paragliding or like line or like um I thought I saw you do something like that. Yes, absolutely. Okay, yes. <laughs> oh, so I'm like smiling just because it was, was so fun. Such a fun trip. So they did do really um, well with like also like it was a service trip. But also, we used such like a vacation basically. Um, 
because the service was fun too. So, mm-hmm. um, but I went parasailing in okay. Manuel Antonio, Manuel Antonio Beach, um, right outside Karaje Hotel, I believe. Again, sorry for butchering. Um, and it was so interesting because I've never been parasailing, but I've seen it. I've seen like videos, and it's just like when you think of parasailing, you're on a boat at least here in the U.S., like, you're on a boat, and then you kind of, like, slyly go, like, they let you go, and then you start going up, up in the air. This one, they, we were on the beach, we're standing there, and they tied us in, and we need to buckle this up, and then they're like, okay, you're going to run, like, towards the ocean. So we're, like, on the beach, strapped in. I have the funniest picture of my friend Christina and me, because we're, like, <laughs> so my other friend who hasn't gone yet because she was going after us was taking pictures and our faces are just so terrified as they're explaining to us like okay like you're gonna run slowly walk 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 then start running start jogging we're gonna run with you and then you're just gonna up in the air as like as soon as you hit the water like kind of like the ocean um and then we just started uh, started lifting up <laughs> and then, um and then when we were done, they just dropped us in the water, like casually, like in the middle of the ocean, which I'm a little scared of. Um, I'm scared of the deep ocean, but it was it was just cool. Like we literally just started slowly going down, and we just land in the water. And then like these guys in jet skis <laughs> came to pick us up, and we just had to unbuckle ourselves in the water and then climb onto the jet ski, and they brought us back to shore, back to the beach while whoever dealt with the parasail and parachute and everything in the water. It was, it's, that was fascinating to me. The, the sharks were totally hibernating that day. Oh my gosh. I, were, that's what we were scared of. We were like, oh my gosh, what's under us right now? But I mean, like, I mean, I, I, I trusted them. I was like, this is what you guys do each time. This has <laughs> got to be somewhat safe. This is what you do to put food. You're going to run towards the water. <laughs> I'm just imagining that. I had never heard of that before. Our faces were so funny. We're like, like it was cool. I liked it. It was really cool. Just think, like you're running, and then suddenly, like you're in the air, um, with these beautiful views. And again, it was like gradual. It wasn't like suddenly we're flying up, shooting up. It was just like very gradual, but still, um, it was amazing. And then we also went rock climbing or not rock climbing, what am I saying? Horse, horseback riding. I'm just thinking about something else. Um, horseback riding around a volcano in La Fortuna. I believe it's Areno Volcano. And that was really cool. And then what else? We also uh, went to Hot Springs. Yeah, just did some uh, po- national park tours. That was one of my favorite things too. Um, the Manuel Antonio National Park, I believe. Okay. Yeah, that was really cool because the tour guide, so you get a tour guide and then he has just like a telescope, backpack, binoculars, and then you just go. Like you just kind of walk along the trail. And then um, he just, it was just very interesting because like you're walking in the rainforest and then um, suddenly he'll be like, oh, stop here. And we're kind of like looking around like there's nothing here. And then he just doesn't say anything. He like fumbles with his telescope. And then um, says, okay, like, come here, come look. And then you look in and you see this tiny little frog in like, um, in like the tree. I'll have to show you a picture. I wish I could show pictures on this um, podcast, but definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just like, how on earth did he see that? Or there's one that was like under a leaf blended in. It was just really cool. Like how knowledgeable, like, like again, going back to the whole nature thing, just like how yeah. knowledgeable they are and like, they hear something and they know something's around, so they're looking and yeah. So that was cool. Awesome. Yeah. So let's stick with that theme with nature because sure. that's coming up, of course. Um, I keep circling back to what me. was so what what just made it so beautiful? Like, was it just how clean everything was, whether it was how different everything was? Um when you think of the nature in Costa Rica, what comes to your mind right away and what do you remember about it specifically? The nature, I'd say, well, yes, clean, green, I'd say very green, just very fresh, if that makes sense, just like the smell, the sights, everything was just so vibrant, I guess, that's a good word, vibrant, Um, the flowers are just like beautiful, the leaves are all green, 
um the rain smells fresh that all makes sense yeah 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 <laughs> it, felt, it, it, felt, it was beautiful it felt beautiful <laughs> yeah it felt beautiful. Not that you can feel beautiful, but maybe you can. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you get I just, I, I just, it just, it's the sense. <laughs> and how did you feel when you when you were on your last day? Where you were like, "Oh man, we're leaving," uh, or like, how how did that feel? Like going back to the United States, having to go back, essentially. Having to go back. I mean, I definitely like it was just it was gonna be sad for sure. I was gonna miss it. Um, again, um, I just thought of something. Speaking of like beautiful fresh the stars so clear clear as day so again just stuff like that but um no i was definitely sad i was gonna miss it um i guess i'm kind of a homebody like i was excited to i guess like have like go back home and have like what i'm used to but at the same time i just loved get like being exposed to that um because it was my first time in costa rica it was my first time really traveling um, first time being exposed to the culture so and like different foods so I was really excited to just kind of branch out in that aspect and like like it essentially because mm. um, you know when you're a first time traveler there is that possibility you're not gonna like it um, but I absolutely loved it so that's what made it absolutely exciting and I miss it so much now now that I'm talking about it oh uh, well you have to go back now Exactly. You have to go back. I always say that. Yeah. You got to go back. It, I always say the first place you go to, there's like that passion where it instills in you. It's like, oh, like this is really cool. Like I could probably do this a little bit more. Yeah. Or if you don't have that passion of traveling in like a bunch of other places, you have that desire to want to go back to that first place you went to. Yeah. I think that's the thing for sure because there are obviously different places that I would like to travel to. But because I know what's there in Costa Rica, it's like, it was amazing. I have to go back. Yeah. You know who I need to get on here? I just thought of this. You, did you ever get to talk to, to Dr. Estrada? Dr. Estrada? Yeah. No, I haven't, but... Uh, he um, he was one of the engineering professors. He's from Costa yeah. Rica. He's from Costa Rica? Did I know yeah. that? I don't know. Yeah. If I, if I didn't know that, I didn't remember that. Oh, okay. Bilingual, Spanish, everything. Oh, very cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but... um. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I got to make my way down to Central Central America for sure. I think you'd really like Costa Rica, but I mean, I would recommend that to absolutely anyone. And Disney, of course. Another um, Disney, of course. Disney, Dis, an, another Disney World in Costa Rica. There you go. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll send that to Walt Disney and his family as well, so they know. But we're, <laughs> we're giving them all these ideas, and we're not going to get any income out of it. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Um, there was something important I was going to say there. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, this is what I wanted to say. Okay. So, another couple goal you and you and Spencer should make: Belize, okay. Belize, Belize is in Central America. I I'm trying to remember what it's next to. It's it's like towards the upper part of Central America. So like Panama yeah. is on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So like when you're following Panama and you're going up, like the far yeah. up part. Belize is like up there. That is the like vacation hotspot in Central America. Oh, really? Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's like the hidden vacation hotspot that people don't know about. I was gonna say like I definitely knew like of it. It's just I didn't know it was like a huge vacation spot. Belize, really very good. To Belize, know. it's popular for couples. So <laughs> there, there there are certain places like so if you think of like South America, you might think of like Peru, and you think of Machu Picchu. If you think of the yes. United States, you might think of New York or you think of Los Angeles. Yeah. If you think of Europe, you might think of Paris. You'll think of France. Right. If you oh, think of yeah. Australia, you think of like the big, big names, you think of Sydney. Mm -hmm. And then there are like those little, like tinier ones that like people know about them, but they don't know why they're so special. Yeah. So like Indonesia, Bali, for example, Bali is becoming like one of the prime time honeymoon hotspots in the world okay. because it's just so beautiful. Like you're, it's just this beautiful island area where you go there and you just forget about the world and you see all these yeah. dolphins and all that stuff. Whereas Belize is like this picturesque, beautiful, not island, but like island vibe where swings are everywhere and like, <laughs> Ooh, pedal, like that, yeah. pedals, pedals in the ocean. And it's, <laughs> it's that like, got there naturally. <laughs> it's, they just, they're just magically there. That yeah. That's where definitely like most, people become mothers and fathers <laughs> like, like that's that's where so 
couple goals for you and Spencer. Sure. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give that <laughs> so, spot in mind. Give it a mind. Give it a mind. And then thank me later down the road. And then, so, yeah. and then think of me. For sure. Yes. Think of me when you guys visit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, for sure. But awesome. So it was great to know about Costa Rica. It was great to know about Disney because you're the expert on that. Yeah. Is there is there any places that you might be considering once this pandemic is officially over with that you might want to travel to or you and Spencer are have on your bucket list per se of places oh you might gosh. want to go to? I feel like we have so much on our bucket list, honestly. We always say like, oh, we should go here one day. We just uh, booked a trip to North Carolina. Okay. Um, I'd love to go to California and I know he would too. He's mm -hmm. a big uh, national parks guy. So I don't know if you've ever seen it. You get like passports. He's the one who first showed this to me, so I had never heard of it, but you get like stamps at each um, national park. They have like the like ink and stamp kind of type thing. And then in the passport book that you have, you just stamp to like everywhere you've been. Um, so we started that, like we went to DC once and we did that. So just like honestly, anywhere around like all the different national parks that we could go to, mm -hmm. I love to do as like more general, but again, like California, definitely outside of the country um he really wants to go to germany which i'd be all for like i'm, I'm all for going absolutely anywhere um i'd love to go to italy i'd say yep. or greece i'm just gonna like name everything probably <laughs> but yeah just as you should travel everywhere as i'm on the travel chronicles for a reason i yes. love to travel <laughs> everywhere the first yeah. step yeah the i think first italy step. italy might be a number one kind different country to go to maybe but everything's on that list the beautiful part about Italy, anywhere you go in Italy, is vacation land. Oh, I'm sure. Anything you go, yeah. because Italy is just so beautiful, so distinct, and so yeah. different. Like, mm -hmm. everything about it. Like, wherever you go, like, if you get lost in Italy, you and Spencer should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure, yeah. I, I won't even, like, say I'm lost. I'll just be like, oh, we're stuck here then, I guess. This is great. <laughs> this is, this is, you I'd love it. to go visit Melissa in Spain. Of course. That, that sounds a little difficult at the moment, but I would love to do that one day. <laughs> Eventually. Hopefully, she'll still, I'm sure she'll still be there. So. Yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> sure. I'm, she's loving it, which is so good to hear. That's great. That's great. Yeah. It, what I love about like certain European countries, like if you know people, then like you can take advantage of like them, essentially. Yeah. Like, oh, if we housing, housing. great. Yeah. <laughs> you can be the tour guide. Like free house, that, that, and that, free that housing. Yeah. Yes, and then like free, like free tour guide, free housing, like Cook possible, me. possible meals paid for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, the whole shebang. Do that to Melissa. The whole, I would. But oh, not I'm just sure. Her. I'm sure you would. But not just, but not just her, but like other people. And like all. Oh, you know. <laughs> like I'm so excited to see you. So like, where am I staying? Where am I eating? Where am I going? <laughs> That's absolutely terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, she would do it though. She would offer it. She wouldn't pay for you, maybe. I don't know. Um, She'd be like, "Are you kidding?" Like, because it's you. I feel like both of us would be like, "Are you kidding me?" I'd figure out a way to twist it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I know. Now I'm gonna go warn her. I figure something out. Well, she can just watch this and find it out. And then that when I bring her on, too. when I bring her on, we can talk about it. So, this is how I'll know if you watched it, Melissa. <laughs> Oh man, that this is, is a touch. This is how you'll know. Oh but not that she's obligated to watch. The only person who's obligated to watch it is me, so I can make my edits. So that's okay. That would be, that would be <laughs> pretty interesting if you've never seen it. But who am I to? I don't know. I love what it. editing's like. <laughs> but awesome. So Italy will be prime time, and then the. So I didn't know that was a thing, like the passport stuff with like um. With the national, yeah. With the national park. I wish I had it on me. Yeah. It's really exciting. cool. Yeah. The only the national regions park, of the country too. The only national park I can think of is like Yellowstone. I didn't know there were others. Yeah, just different. Um, like there are parks in like DC, um, mm. New York, even Pennsylvania. Like on our way back to E Town once we stopped by a park. Okay. Yeah, what was it? I don't want to. I don't want to butcher any names. So I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it's just like, like a gems. little gift shop. You hidden gems people don't know about. Exactly, See, I don't even know about. Yeah. See. Also, out of curiosity, I hear beautiful birds chirping. Is oh. is your window open? Or... No, it is not. That's just how loud they are here. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In my little neighborhood, the suburbs. <laughs> they like they like to talk. They birds do. Like... They do. I love it though. I hope it's not too loud. 
But. No, it's fine. I just, that's the first time. So I pointed it out because that's the first time I've heard that and anybody had brought on. Like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Outside sound. So I didn't know if you were like on like a patio or like. No, you're I'm, not, I, you're, I'm right by the window. Like, okay. But it's, it's not open. Um, okay. I, I generally, I, that's just how loud they are. I just gotten used to it, I guess. <laughs> I think people have pointed that out though, like over Zoom. Um, when I've been on like calls for like class or um, group meetings and whatnot. Back last year. When I was in school. Popular <laughs> birds. The birds are the birds are popular. Yeah. <laughs> birds are popular. My dog, she's so funny. When I walk her, she like I don't I can't tell if she like likes the birds and wants to talk to them. <laughs> or or if she hates them because when she goes up to them, they can fly away. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> I've tried to figure it out. But I think it's I think it's the latter because mm. she she gets upset like when she when they fly. And oh. I think I think she's upset that she can't do that, and oh. then like, and then she'll like bark at them and like cuss them out as they're flying away. That's <laughs> so because she doesn't she doesn't pounce or anything, right? Like she doesn't try to chase them. It's just like she just wants to be friends with them. Oh no, she pounces. She tries. Oh, she to oh okay. yeah, she's yeah because she knows. So at first she would just try to like be friends with them, but now she knows what's coming oh, <laughs> because <laughs> because because they can fly. So oh dogs are dogs are something else. I love it. It's great, but I'm happy that you have some chirping birds to keep you company. That's yes, great. I have some chirping birds. There were kids playing outside. I, was, I wasn't I was sure if you could hear them either. <laughs> that I did not hear. Okay, because I think not. school might have, yeah, it's almost three. School might have recently let out because I heard a school bus go by earlier too. Oh, no. But wow, the birds, I guess, are louder. Yes. Sound. Wow, okay. <laughs> yes, but, that, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, no, that's a nicer sound than that's okay. engine, so. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much i'm so happy to have had you, you on very much i could honestly talk so much about this so thank you all for listening no and you did great you did to have you. on and i know of course everybody else on here is busy with their lives so to have people come on here and take the time i appreciate it so i genuinely see the enjoyment of talking about it like i could again i could talk so long about this it's just i love it so I love the places yeah. I've been, and I can't wait to continue. Maybe a second episode next year after I get through everybody this year. Ooh, part two, Olivia. Part two. Trap Chronicles. <laughs> yep, maybe we can even get Spencer involved. We there we him. go. Yes, when we've been to more places, absolutely. Talk about his like his park, his park range and stuff. Yeah. Park yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. So let me introduce. I have never introduced my dog on the show, so let me introduce her live for the first time. Oh, so, I'm honored. Let me do that for you. Hey, be right there. No. I want to introduce you on the live show. Come on, get up. She's napping. She's napping? Coco, wait. Yeah, I woke her up. <laughs> Say hello to Coco, everybody. She's so stinky. She's on the live show. Oh, my goodness. You I didn't live. hear any squeaking, though. You were live on television. There's a camera. She's looking. <laughs> Hey, Coco. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> tell, tell everybody that you want to travel to one day. I take her. She's not interested. Oh, she didn't oh. freak out with that. My dog used to freak out. Oh, say hi to Olivia. Say, hi. Say hi to the world. <gasps> hi. <laughs> that was her saying hi. So we'll get you back on here eventually, okay? That made my day. Wow. She's so calm right now. She's not, Um, she wasn't chewing on that chew toy. She she was a little bit in the beginning, but then she stopped. Oh, I didn't hear it. Okay. She was. So. Do you want to travel too? She wants to travel to my house. She, she wants to travel back to the floor. That's what she wants to do. <laughs> I can't believe you woke her up for that. I did. She was not. She was, I think she might have been having a dream, actually. That's, oh. okay. That's okay. She so. caught those birds. <laughs> she caught the birds. She flew. She was flying. She was, she was flying. She was flying. Oh, well, thank you so much, Olivia. Yes, thank you. I'm I'm really honored. Thank you very much for having me. And that was a wrap. So I will let you know per se about all those edits and stuff like that. But thank you for being on, and I'm so happy to have had you on. And thank you. I hope I did all right. You did. Everybody have a great day. <laughs>